research was on, well, I didn't really get to finish, but I guess we'll get to that at the end. But I was just testing chicken feces to get the bacteria out of there and test it for antibiotic resistance. So I started in, was that this year? It was, early, yeah, earlier this year I started. And my first set of methods was different from what I've been doing this semester. The first set of methods was me taking actual like chicken meat and testing the bacteria found in that for antibiotic resistance. But that didn't really work out that well because the chicken was too clean, I guess from processes that they do in the poultry factories, whatever. So that didn't work. And then COVID happened, so then I didn't get to finish anyway. But this semester, I had a little bit of a better result until the fridge broke. So, foodborne illness affects one in six Americans and 3,000 people die yearly. The most common pathogens for foodborne illness are Staph, Campylobacter, and Salmonella. So, I'm sure you're all familiar with foodborne illness. You can get that from uncooked food, raw foods. You know, sometimes people eat sushi that's raw. I don't know why. It's also, yeah. <laughs> and um, just cross-contamination during food prep, whether it's from home or at a restaurant. So this is actually very relevant just because it also ties in antibiotic resistance and antibiotics are really misused, whether it's from prescribers or patients. I've been around prescribers and I'll say, well, just throw an antibiotic on there, along with their prescription for like painkillers or anything like that. And also, patients, if you've ever gone to a doctor and they prescribe you an antibiotic, they make sure to tell you, use the entire prescription. Patients like to use it until they feel better, and then they go back when they feel like they need it again, and they try to use a prescription from a decade ago. So antibiotics are misused widely from different people. So this research ties in bacteria from chicken that is tested for its antibiotic resistance, and the objective was to test these three bacteria, Staph, Salmonella, and Campylobacter from chicken feces that I got from Anita. They have a few chickens at home, so they were all backyard chickens, nothing professional, anything like that. So I have a few different methods. The first set of methods was sampling. So the chicken fecal matter was collected from fresh droppings and the collected samples were stored individually in a cool environment until they were transferred to a refrigerator to maintain freshness. So there are three different bacteria that I attempted to isolate. The first was staph. So for the isolation methods for this, the fecal matter was directly streaked onto the mannitol salt arbor plates and incubated for 48 hours at 37 degrees. So after that, I did observe the colonies and look at the morphology, and the staff were collected and plated onto BHI plants, which was not very successful. And then I also did DNA testing, which was semi-successful. So for the isolation of Campylobacter, I inoculated the fecal samples in molten broth, which is selective for Campylobacter and then I incubated it for 42 degrees for 48 hours in a microaerobic chamber, and that was just um, an acrylic box, and it had a little gas pack to keep the microaerobic environment. After that, I then streaked the sample onto Mueller Hinton plates and incubated at 42 degrees for 48 hours, again in the microaerobic box. So after that, I did a gram stain and I was able to confirm Campylobacter, but I couldn't do the antibiotic testing because the samples were contaminated when the fridge broke. 
And for the salmonella, this just gave me a hard time, and I'm actually still kind of working on it. So for this, I took one gram of the fecal sample, and actually, I didn't get this actual broth. So I used peptone broth instead, and I incubated it for 24 hours at 42 degrees. And then I plated it onto the XLD plates and incubated that again for 24 hours. So with that one, I actually am still working on that. The first time I did it, I didn't get any salmonella, so I had to redo it. So this is also a part that I didn't get to do, but this was the second part, testing all of the bacteria for antibiotic resistance. So that would just be done with the Kirby Bauer disc on the Miller Hinton auger plates, and then I would have just incubated that. So, pictures aren't really that big, but these are the results for the staff. So the picture up top here just shows all of the different plates, and they are, they have a positive response, which is indicative of staff being present. And then these two here at the bottom, these are DNA's plates, and they just show that there is staph, but it's not a pure culture. And these here are my results for Campylobacter. This one here on the left, figure D, that's just the plating of the Campylobacter on the Mueller-Hinton plates. And this not very good picture is the confirmation from a gram stain. This is a microscopic image. So I don't have anything for the salmonella because I'm still working on it. And my conclusion is, is that Campylobacter and Staph were found, although the Staph wasn't a pure sample, they were found in the feces sample and I would just need to continue my research to go ahead and do the antibiotic testing to determine their resistance. And whenever I can isolate the salmonella, I'll do the same with that. And these are my references. And that is the end.